All right, hey everybody, welcome to part two of the one, three, and one, four concept guide. Uh, we will pick up where we left off with those definitions and things uh, before we get going. I know it smells really tempting and good in here with the, the smell of those cookies, but I hope that you can still focus on what we need to do. Um, it's bothering me, but here we go. Uh, a, a quick definition. Statements that are accepted without proof are called axioms or postulates. Um, the reason this is here is we're about to talk about some postulates, and you're probably like, what in the world is a postulate? Well, it's something that you're just going to have to accept that this is true, and I'm not going to prove that it's true. That's what a postulate is. Let's go see one. Um, so the first one is called the segment addition postulate. Um, so we're going to be adding some segments. Uh, let's take the scenario. If B is between points A and C, there's point A, there's point C, B is between it. What does that mean? That means it's on the line that would contain A and C, so it is directly in between. All right? Then, uh, segment AB, or the length of AB, plus segment BC, or the length of BC, will equal what? Well, what do you think? AB plus BC equals... AC. That is the segment addition postulate. Can you accept that without proof? I hope you can. That's all that it is. Two segments added together equal a bigger segment as long as they are connected by a shared point. So if they don't, or if they aren't connected, we cannot say DF plus GK equals something because they're not connected. Um, nor if, if they're connected but we uh, don't have the shared point, AB plus CD, well, doesn't equal some other segment. AD, AB plus CD certainly doesn't equal AD. It's missing some parts in between or if there's overlap or whatever, okay? But we could say that segment AC plus segment CD equals segment AD. As long as they share that point um, and then there's no overlap, then, then we're good. Okay, so let's look at an example. Um, we have this scenario, DT, the length of DT, this entire segment is 60. Um, it tells us that DS is equal to 2X minus 8 and ST equals 3X minus 12. Find the value of X and then find the lengths of all these other segments. Well, so here we go, DS plus ST equals DT. That would be the segment addition postulate. So we can take this expression of what ds is equal to plus the expression of what st is equal to and set it equal to the whole thing that dt is equal to. So in this case we get 2x minus 8 plus 3x minus 12 equals 60. We now have a single equation with a single variable x that we know how to solve from algebra. Solve it. That will get us x. Um, so 5x minus 20 combining those like terms equals 60. Um, add 20 to both sides, 5x equals 80, divide by 5, x equals 16. Okay, what does ds equal? Well, now that we know what x is equal to, we can plug that in. 2 times 16 minus 8 equals 24. Do the same thing for st. Um, 3 times 16 minus 12 is 36. What does dt equal to? Well, it needs to equal 24 plus 36. Of course, we already know that it's 60. They told us that. But 24 plus 36 does indeed equal 60, so we must have done something right. Okay? So that's the segment addition postulate. A couple of other, um, one more set of definitions here we need to talk about. Two objects are congruent if they have the same size and shape. The symbol for congruent is this. It's an equal sign with a little squiggly thing over it. That means congruent. Um, equals means that the value, the numbers are the same, whereas congruent means, yes, sorry, that, that things are the same. So um, when it says that BC is congruent to CB right here, that means the two segments are congruent. Um, here, if it says BC is equal to CB, that means that the two segments have the same length, that their number values are the same. All right, when we're talking about the midpoint of a segment, I think you could probably figure this out. The midpoint um, means, hold on. The midpoint of a segment is the point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. You probably could have figured that out. The middle of a segment makes two other smaller congruent segments. 
So if C is a midpoint, then what? Then AC is equal to CB, or a, the segment AC is congruent to CB. So if we have these links here, the AC and CB have 2x minus 1 and 3x minus 4, we can make this equation and then go solve for x and get that x is equal to 5. This then will allow us to figure out what the, each of these lengths are. That's not the answer to the question. Why? Because it said find the length of AC, CB, and AC in this question right here. So we can plug in 5 for x. We get that AC is equal to 11. We can plug in 5 for x and get that CB is equal to 11. They better be the same. And then, of course, we can add those guys together and get 22. All right. One more piece, the bisector of a segment. Oh, the main, here's what you got to know. This is something we'll be emphasizing a lot. If you have a midpoint, you'll have two congruent segments. That's what a midpoint does. All right. Um, a, this, the bisector of a segment is a line segment, ray, or plane. In other words, it's, it's about anything that intersects the segment at its midpoint. In other words, a bisector is anything that contains the midpoint of a segment. Okay? Um, in other words, if you have a segment bisector, you have a midpoint. So these two things are related in that this, a, the, a segment bisector, makes a midpoint, which means you'll end up with congruent segments. A segment bisector doesn't make congruent segments, it makes a midpoint. The midpoint makes congruent segments. If that sounds a little confusing, well, it won't uh, after a little while. We'll, we'll, we'll see this a lot. So here's what I'd like for you to do. See if you can answer questions 13 through 17 based on what we've just done. These are those answers. Okay. Um, on number 18, this diagram down here you should be able to figure out the length of BC, AC, and DE from what is given right here. It's like a puzzle. The key thing here, it tells you that AC is congruent with CB and that B is a midpoint of AC. So use that information and see if you can figure these guys out. How'd you do? Did you get that BC is equal to three, that AC uh, is equal to 6, and DE is equal to 4? I hope so. Okay, and we turn the page. The angle addition postulate and the angle bisectors. This is from now section 1-4, which is about angles. This is all going to work the exact same way as the segment stuff, except we're talking about angles instead of segments. Okay? So here we have a big angle, XOZ, and we have couple of smaller angles, x, o, y, and y, o, z. So um, if y lies in the interior of angle x, o, z, therefore we can make this array that comes out of there. What we can say is the smaller angle z, o, y, plus the other smaller angle x, o, y, or y, o, x, equals angle x, o, z. That's the angle addition postulate. As long as they share a common side and no other points, we can do that. So um, and we can change these names around and stuff like that. It's the same thing to say. So here's an example then. If x, o, y is equal to 70 and y, o, z is equal to x minus 30 and angle x, o, z is equal to 2x minus 20, what's the measure of angle x, o, z? We need to use these expressions to write an equation so that we can solve for x. Well, we can plug these expressions into this guy. And we'll have this equation, 70, x, o, y, plus x minus 30, which is y, o, z, equals the measure of angle x, o, z to x minus 20, and then go solve. I hope you see the relationship then between this and like the uh, segment addition postulate. It's the same concept, um, just applied to angles instead. Okay, moving on. Um, congruent angles are angles that have the equal measure. Same size, same shape, well, angles can... Uh, the shape of an angle is how you know wide the opening is. The bisector angle is the ray or segment that divides the angle into congruent angles. This is just like what a midpoint does. Notice there's no such thing as a midpoint for angles. We have uh, rays. They're, so they're, so we go straight from the angle bisector to congruent angles. One other definition we need to know about angles is this adjacent. 
Uh, the word adjacent means next to. Um, oh, just to emphasize this, yeah, a bisector angle creates two congruent angles every time, like a midpoint does for segments, makes congruent segments. Um, so adjacent angles are coplanar angles with a common vertex. So in this case, uh, we have these um, coplanar angles, the common vertex is Q, and a common ray. So QR is a common ray between this angle here and this angle here. Um, the interior points it talks about are would be, they don't share any, they, in other words, they don't overlap, all right? So using the diagram on the right, answer the following, if QR is a bisector of angle PQS, then PQR equals RQS. If this is an angle bisector, then these are congruent angles. Angle PQS, nope, sorry, not AQ, PQR is adjacent to RQS. They are, they're next to each other, they share a ray uh, and a vertex, okay? Let's see if we can apply these. Uh, I'll do number one for you. So we got angle seven and angle eight. Where's angle seven? It's here, right? Angle eight is here, okay? Together, what do they do? Well, they form this straight angle, P, Q, R. So if we add those two angles together, angle seven plus angle eight, we will get 180 degrees. This is the angle addition postulate forming a straight angle. Now we plug in the expressions. We solve for x, and it says to find the, find the variable, and then find the measure of the numbered angle, so now I just gotta plug in x here and here. I get 155 for angle seven. When I plug in x for uh, 30 for x for measure eight, I get 25. Together, 155 degrees plus 25 degrees equals 180, which it should. I'm gonna leave you two numbers two and three now. Give these guys a shot. There's a lot more stuff going on here. I got five angles, I'm sorry, four angles, but what do they do when you put them together? Can you figure it out? Pause the video, try it before I give you the answers. Did you get six for X, 30, 30, 60, 60 for those angles? Did you get eight with 88 and 92 for number three? I hope so. Uh, and then the last thing down here, this says that uh, we got some opposite rays. That means that this is a straight angle. And then we got, ooh, a bisector. What does that mean? That means we got congruent angles. See if you can then, well, answer these questions. Number one, should have gotten four, not 11.5. Number two, should have gotten five, which therefore means the answer is 56. Okay, you likely have questions. We'll certainly talk about them in class. Be prepared to, to, uh, to ask them when we get there. Get some rest. There's a lot going on. Bye.